Hello and welcome to the Heritage Arts Podcast. I'm Kayla. I am a knitter, a crocheter, a novice sewist, um, an all-around crafter and yarn lover. And I have this podcast to share a little bit more about what I'm working on, what I'm looking forward to working on, and to share more about my passion for this craft. Um, if you have joined us before, my husband Tim used to also host this podcast with me. He is a maker and hand crafter in his own right. Um, however, if you watch the previous episode, you can learn a little bit more about why we've changed formats a little bit. Um, different demands and schedules uh, just means that he is doing a lot more work around our house as we finish off our basement and um, doing a little bit less cross-stitch and crafting in that sense. So um, we've had a little change of format. That's why I kind of call this season two. Um, partially that, partially because I had lost count of the episodes somewhere um, in between the transition um, from the episodes we did a couple years ago to this time. Um, so this is now season two, episode two. This uh, podcast is gonna be mostly about knitting today. Um, like I said, I do hope to share a little bit more of um, sewing when I get around to it, but I don't always get around to it as frequently as I do knitting because knitting is portable. I am better at it. I enjoy it more, <laughs> but I do really um, have aspirations to do more sewing, more mending, things like that. So um, hopefully as the podcast goes on, you will see um, maybe some of my progress with some of that. But Today, it's a whole lot of wool, um, wool, yarn, um, and it's it's really mostly knitting today. So I hope I have you here for the right reasons, <laughs> and um, let's get started. I have a cup of tea to keep me warm, little snowman mug today. Um, it's pretty cold out. I guess I'm not sure exactly the temperature here. Um, let's see. <laughs> My handy watch tells me all. 26 degrees. <laughs> um, so not the coldest that we encounter here in Wisconsin, but, um, it feels chilly today. So, uh, we were out, um, we live, I should mention, we live in Southern Wisconsin. Um, my husband, Tim and I, and then we have a two and a half year old son. So, um, I went with our son to library story time today, and that was just, Oh, we got chilled to the bone <laughs> going in and out of the car. So this tea is a welcome companion today. So um, I think I'm going to start out with, um, well, I don't really have any FOs today. Um, other than the fact that last time I had talked about kind of a whip that I was undoing, um, that I was frogging. And in a sense, I have completed that part of the project of frogging um, a, a hat that I had knit for my son um, when he was itty bitty. Um, it, I was looking back at pictures and he must have been, um, I don't know, five, six months old. And he was just so squishy. And um, he's still squishy, but <laughs> a different kind of squishy when you have a baby squishy versus a toddler squishy. And um, so that was fun looking back at the pictures. But I had knit him an Oslo hat um, by Petite Knit. And um, it's a great hat. I know a lot of people really love it. But with a little one, um, I was always just getting kind of frustrated with how the brim folded over and would lay um, and then also he had grown out of it and because of the design of the hat, I mean, he really, I couldn't really just kind of unfold the brim or anything like that to make it fit him longer. So, um, I decided to frog it and, um, these are the remains. <laughs> uh, I had used Knit Picks palette in the colorway toffee. And, um, if you know, palette comes in, um, a 50 gram skein. And uh, I ended up salvaging 47 grams of that. Um, there could I could have a scrap somewhere in a little bag, um, but I'm pretty happy with that. So my plan now um, is eventually to knit it into a new hat. So I explained last week how I really love this color. Um, 
it reminds me of a Carhartt hat. And so I want to knit the Musselberg hat by Isolde Teague in this colorway. Um, and because of the design of it, it kind of is a tube that then folds in on itself. I will use just different scrap yarn for the inside and have this for the outside. So this is my FO. <laughs> it's now just balls of yarn, but I finished doing it, so it counts. Um, and these will become that eventually. However, um, right now, uh, he doesn't really need a new hat. I have a couple other hats that he can wear. So that's not super priority for this year right now, but what is a priority for this year <laughs> is um, he really needs like a cowl. So two-year-olds, of course, are impossible to dress as it is, but in wintertime, it's even harder. And the thought of trying to wrap a scarf around him um, is just more than I can bear. So what I really wanted for him was like a cowl. Um, during the fall, we have used like a buff. If you've heard of those, they're kind of, um, they're popular in the like hiking outdoor community where um, it's like a tube of fabric, but you can fold it and you can make it a hat, you can make it a headband, it can be a cowl. I don't know, there's like 10 other uses for it. But um, I put that on him as just a little cowl just to like cover a little bit of his neck during the fall. Um, so I really liked the cowl idea. So I went stash diving and I just couldn't find any yarn that I either wanted to sacrifice for something for a two-year-old, <laughs> some of it was a little too precious, um, or something that was the right weight or the right quantity. I had quite a couple of um, pairs of fingering weight yarns that I have kind of set aside for color work um, patterns together, but I didn't want this to be a color work cowl. Um, Although I would love, I would love to knit him. There's um, Hunt Handmade, is that what it's called? I'll probably correct myself below here, but um, she has the those dinosaur sweaters. I'm totally blanking on the names of them right now, but it's a series where she has like these dinosaur sweat colorwork sweaters, um, a dinosaur colorwork cowl kind of fossils. And I really love that. I would love to make something of that series for Noah someday. But right now I just need something that I can knit him fairly quickly so that he can use it for most of the winter. And that is something I can use as like a portable project. Um, so I didn't want it to be a color work, the fingering weight color work. That just wasn't going to be the right thing. And I didn't have a lot of other like DK weight or even worsted weight really right now in my stash. And so, um, so I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. However, I actually have a sweater that has been in a little pile of to be frogged pile. Um, and that is my faucet crop. If you watched our old episodes, you know that I was like obsessed with this crop and I was so excited to finish it. I was so excited to wear it. And it's a wonderful sweater, a wonderful pattern. But there were two problems with mine. Um, first being that I have ADHD and I don't read directions very well. <laughs> That's the first. Um, so I, in the instructions, um, Devin, the designer, Devin Ventry of Knitty McPurley, she suggests knitting this panel, which is kind of a, that kind of stitch pattern. <laughs> I don't know what you would call it, but um, she suggests knitting it in a smaller needle because it tends to be a little loose. I didn't do that. <laughs> so I've ended up with this really loose bit at a very inopportune spot. Um, and so it would always kind of bunch up on me and that just wasn't, I wasn't wearing it partially for that reason and partially because the colors, although I love the colors all together, I just... I didn't have a ton in my wardrobe that I was going to wear them with in this season of life. I have some things in my closet that they look that it looks really good with, but they are things that I'm not really wearing in this season of life. I may even be getting rid of soon. So it just it just wasn't being worn. And for me, if I am not wearing something, it's what I've knit it for and why I take the time to knit something 
it's now being put to waste it right like if i have taken the time to knit it and handcraft something but i'm not wearing it it's almost like all of that has gone to waste but in my mind anyway if i can salvage the yarn um i can chalk the knitting time up to experience <laughs> and enjoyment and recreation and if i can reclaim the yarn and use it for something that will be used more heavily i find it worth it to frog it and re-knit it so that said um i loved i loved knitting this i loved some of the design elements that devin included in here and so what i'm actually thinking is that i may knit re-knit this into a faux set inspired cowl so I loved just the little bit of color work detail and how the color work is is done in this. Um, it's not super intensive to where you have like a lot of skeins of yarn going on at one time. Um, sometimes you don't even have more than one, but you're still getting this beautiful color work. So um, that's kind of my thought is I will probably do that. So I have started frogging it <laughs> um, and I have several balls already. Can you see? Yeah, there's several balls already um, wound up and I am just working through, I should say, some of these, these were leftovers, these ones that are not all crinkly, but I have several balls that are frogged and, um, and wound up. And so I'm going to keep frogging that and then I will start making it into a reclaimed <laughs> uh, faux set inspired cowl for my son. Um, it's all, uh, DK Superwash, um, Merino, which I think is going to just be really nice and soft for him. Um, and I think that will be great. So that's kind of a whip. Um, we're getting into whips now cause that I really didn't have any FOs. So that is kind of one whip that is in the process of being undone. <laughs> um, so my next whip that is, uh, a really a whip in earnest um, at this point. It is in process, in progress of being completed, not of being undone, is my reflection cardigan. So I shared about this last time. I even shared <laughs> this sweater, which is um, just a decade old cardigan from Target that I've had. Um, I got it when I first got a job out of college and I was working in an office a lot. I have worn the heck out of it. Um, it's kind of hard to see on the camera here, but I have some, I have some threadbare, uh, there it is. <laughs> I have some threadbare elbows, um, from sitting in a desk and working at a computer. Um, and really at this point, it's a very form fitting cardigan. Um, it doesn't, really serve my needs most of the time. Of course, I'm wearing it today, but honestly, I'm just wearing it to show you the difference between the two cardigans. <laughs> I didn't even wear this most of the day. Most of the day I was wearing a flannel. Um, but <laughs> I did want to show this a little bit more and, um, and then be able to show the fit of the new cardigan. So um, the new cardigan that I am knitting to replace this one, essentially, um, is the reflection cardigan designed by the velvet acorn um i'm sorry i don't know her first name or her full name but um the velvet acorn is where you can find her designs and this is a worsted weight sweater so it's going to be a little more hardy a little more substantial which is um kind of what i was looking for in a replacement for this sweater and it i'm knitting it in um Tacky Yarns Kiawa is, oops, <laughs> is the, is the name of the yarn. And, um, it is a wool and cotton blend. And so I think it's going to be really nice to carry me, um, through a lot of the year with varying seasons. Um, it'll be nice in the winter. It'll keep me a little bit warmer. It's not going to be as warm as, you know, an untreated wool sweater, but it should keep me um, warm in the winter, keep me warm in the summer when I'm inside the air conditioned buildings, um, and also be cool enough to wear in the, you know, in the summer if I'm running in and out of places. So, um, 
I had to have a yellow cardigan again. Again, it's not exactly the same color, of course, but this is a color that I think is going to really work with a lot of the pieces of my wardrobe. So um, you've probably seen as I've been flashing it around <laughs> that um, that I have made significant progress on this from last time. So last time um, I had made some good progress on my first sleeve and I had the second sleeve stitches on hold and the hem whoop, <laughs> and the hem stitches still on hold as well. Um, this time I have a full sleeve completed along with ribbing and a tubular bind off, my favorite. And I have a second sleeve almost completed. <laughs> um, and I've just barely started the ribbing. So I am going to try this on for y'all right now um, because I, I've been holding this up and it's really hard to see exactly how it fits. So I joked about how last time I could have put this all on a hanger so you could see how the sweaters were laying, but I will just show you now here. So this is the old sweater, <laughs> kind of a V-neck situation, doesn't quite close anymore. <laughs> Actually never really closed. This is like an extra small and I normally wear a medium in almost everything. Um, so this is a very, it, it's like intended to be <laughs> just very tiny. Um, so uh, that's kind of part of the problem, <laughs> but um, it worked in my old wardrobe. It's not working for me now. It's not serving me anymore. So we're on to something new. So that's just, I wanted to show kind of how that fit and then how this sweater is going to compare. So they both have a similar um, kind of V-neck neckline that will be a little hard to see in the moment because I don't have, you know, the button band or anything on and I'm getting tangled now. <laughs> getting totally tangled. Okay, let's try, let's try this again. Okay, we have a sleeve. This is not the completed sleeve. This is my jingly sleeve. And the other sleeve with completed. So you can see it's fitting quite similarly um, with a little, you know, a little more room in the sleeve. Um, these did end up, uh, the sleeves ended up like that much tighter than I kind of intended um because I do want to be able to wear like a long sleeve button down under it but I think that when I wash and block it I think it's going to grow like a smidge and I think it should be just fine and it'll you know it'll of course stretch um so the sleeve I have um knit all the way kind of just right to my wrist however because of the tubular bind off and the ribbing I can pull it up a little bit, which I like to be able to do just to keep it out of things, cooking or just anything. Um, so you can see it does all um, fits fairly similarly if you kind of pull these hems out or these uh, edges out, but it will have a similar neckline and everything um, once I have the button band on. And then I mentioned this on the last podcast, so I knew where I wanted the the arms, the sleeves to go to. Um, and so I'm, you know, I'm knitting that, but I wasn't sure how low or how long I wanted the actual sweater to be. Um, and so I just put these stitches on hold right now. <laughs> like I just have them on an extra cable and I will go back to them. I'll go back to the hem and um, and do that after I have finished the sleeves and I can see kind of how it um, just how how it looks um, on my body and with some different things that I want to wear it with and with the actual length of the sleeves. So um, I kind of skipped ahead to finish the sleeves before I am actually finishing the sweater. Man, I don't want to put on my old sweater. I just want to like stay in this, but I don't want to be all distracting and get myself all tangled again. But man, this is already like so much cozier than that other sweater. So we'll take it off though, so that I don't um, get myself into any tangled mess. <laughs> but that is my reflection cardigan, making excellent progress on it. I have a feeling that um, 
I have a feeling that this cuff here will be done in probably an episode of The West Wing tonight. <laughs> My husband and I are watching The West Wing before bed. Um, first time that we've watched it, you know, just like 20 some odd years later. Um, but we are really enjoying it. So uh, I feel that that is a show now that is going to remind me of the sweater. The sweater is going to remind me of the show. This show is going to remind me of this season, um, of this kind of fall winter season. And um, I just, I really like that. So um, yes, I will probably finish this cuff during our next episode of the West Wing. And um, then I will be on to figuring out the bottom. So that is my reflection cardigan. I am so eager to wear it again. I guess I will put on my old sweater because I am cold, but begrudgingly, I will say. Once you try on your own hand-knit sweater, it's really hard to go back to Morona from Target. No shade to Target. I like some of their stuff, but you just can't beat a hand-knit sweater. So forgive me for my awkwardness here, but this is what you get. <laughs> I'm hoping to not have as many cuts this time um, and jumping around in the podcast. Uh, last time I recorded on my computer and it kept going to a screensaver. So I kept having to like tap, tap and cut. And I was just getting back into it and kind of all over the place. So hopefully this time <laughs> we'll be doing less cuts and you just get more of the real me. <laughs> and hopefully you like it. We'll see. Um, okay, another uh, another sip of tea, actually, first. Okay, another whip that I have here. Last week, I or not last week, I don't know. When did I record? Like a week and a half ago. So last episode, <laughs> I had talked about wanting to have another DK weight sock on the needles. This is an old one. This is not a recent one. This is very old. You can see all the pills and all of that goodness. Um, I probably should wash them. So sorry you're seeing like a dirty sock. Not that it looks dirty. Um, but this was kind of, this is the, my favorite. This is my favorite sock. Let's just say that. This is my favorite sock. Um, I knit this earlier this year, I believe. It is... 100% BFL Blue Face Luster Wool from West Yorkshire Spinners. It is the Wood Pigeon colorway of their kind of like birds colorway series. And um, it is a DK weight slipper sock and it is so cozy, so warm, so cushy. It fits my foot perfectly and I just love wearing these. So I knew I wanted to make another another pair and I wanted to have a pair of socks on the needles. I haven't had a pair of socks on the needles in a while, um, but they're of course so great for something to be portable that I can throw in my purse that I can even like knit on while Noah's playing either at home or at the library or anything like that. So um, I wanted to quickly get one on the needles and I quickly got one on the needles and I'm now quickly finishing one of them. Um, so this is same yarn, West Yorkshire Spinners. Let's see, it's kind of washed out. Sorry, I got some crazy light going on here. <laughs> what am I even doing? West Yorkshire Spinners, Blue Face Luster, DK Prince. This one is called uh, Pheasant. So I picked this one. I, I have several of, um, of these. I think I have five different colorways of this. I got them on sale, I think from either Webs or Lovecrafts. Um, and I, I just like, I so love this yarn. I love BFL and I love these fun colorways. Um, they're very like sophisticated colorways, I would say, but they, you know, they just have that self patterning effect, which is so fun. And it's so fun to knit. It's so addictive to knit. So I just, I love it. Um, so this is the colorway pheasant and I picked this one because it felt like a little festive, not super festive or anything overboard. It's kind of nice and fun that this one ended up being red and green for coming up to Christmas. But, um, but 
I, I just felt like it was kind of wintry. Um, we have a painting um, that is not currently displayed in our house, but we um, will have it uh, in the basement once that's all finished. Um, and it is like pheasants in a snowy kind of farm scene with some old farm equipment. And it's just a really, um, really nice portrait. And so the pheasant kind of motif kind of reminds me of that. So yeah, I started this, um, I probably started it like the day after I recorded my last podcast. Um, so like a week and a half ago, maybe. Uh, and I think I started maybe the 18th or something. And I've made my way through. I am just about to start the toe. Um, however, I was, I think I was just in a very busy, challenging season when I did these and I did not really record any of what I did. Um, any of my stitch counts or anything like that, stitch counts, row counts, anything. Um, so I've been having to kind of deconstruct this a little bit. Um, and so I've had to, you know, I kind of read my knitting and see what I did, count the number of rows I did, uh, and all of that. So I need to look at the toe again and figure out exactly what my decreases were there. Um, but that's kind of where I'm at right now. And so once I do that, this will go really quick and then I will be on to the second one. And I am another piece that I am just like, so excited to have in my in my drawer and on my feet and um, to keep me warm this winter. So that is one of my socks, another whip, and that is um, that concludes my active whips. I um I'm not a monogam obviously not a monogamous knitter, um, but I have lately been a been not wanting to have too many things on the needles. It gets a little overwhelming for me if I have too many. Um, so I try to keep it somewhat minimal. Um, so yes, that is my, those are my whips. Um, upcoming whips. Uh, like I said, I don't like to get myself too overwhelmed with having too many things on the needle, but I do like to have a variety that I can work on in different settings, um, depending on just what, where I am, what I'm doing. So I like to have a portable project like a sock, or like I said, maybe that cowl might become a portable project. Um, and then I really have had a goal to like be knitting more sweaters, um, and more wardrobe type pieces to replace things that are getting worn out in my wardrobe or my husband's wardrobe, um, or just new things that are needed. And so, you know, having a sweater on the needles is, is great, but of course it is less portable. Sometimes the only time I can really work on it is like at, right before bed or, um, maybe during nap time. But, um, so, so yeah, I like having a couple different things and I kind of feel like once I wrap up the couple things I've talked about, like once I probably wrap up the cowl and then just these projects, I think we're going to be getting close to the end of the year. And that is about the time that I kind of like reassess. I typically will end up going through my stash. I don't have a huge stash. It's just uh, basically a Rubbermaid tub um, or Sterilite tub or whatever, <laughs> but a big, you know, tub. That's basically my stash. And I kind of go through and assess like things that I already have, maybe grouped for projects, what projects do I want to take on, things like that. I feel like I mostly end up doing that kind of around the beginning of the year. And then I also, um, for several years, have participated in um, the Make Nine kind of project. I, I mean, a lot of people do that. Um, I had first really started doing it uh, with or like with as part of uh, the Make Nine Mal make along that um, Amy of Noble Character Crafts hosts. And so um, this year, I think I have made it through or will make it through six of my nine, which is a record for me to make it through that many. <laughs> but um, some have been just eliminated based on, oh, I don't need to do that anymore. Um, one I actually knit two of. So, um, I think that on a future podcast sometime, you know, kind of nearing the end of the year, I will maybe go through that in more detail and really share those projects and then also share what I'm thinking of for next year. 
Um, so I do think I'll kind of have a regrouping at some point, um, at some point there. So that is something to look forward to on the next, maybe not the next podcast, but sometime, um, kind of before the end of the year, hopefully I will be able to share a little bit more about my make nine, uh, plans, my make nine, uh, successes and my progress for this year and then my plans for next year. Um, so that's kind of the outlook for upcoming whips. <laughs> nothing definitive. Let's just finish out this year, finish out these projects and then, and then reassess. Another thing that I do hope to start doing on future podcasts is to go through my cozy memories blanket and start sharing, um, some like start sharing kind of square by square, some of my past projects. Um, and I think that will be really fun. One last thing. I have a shameless, shameless plug and that is for my sock design, which is the iced gingerbread socks. I designed these last year. Um, I released them last December. And um, so I did a fingering weight and a DK weight. And that, this is where I really fell in love with a DK weight sock. So squishy, so lovely. Um, so I, I have designed both of these. I have patterns written up for both of them. And, um, from, uh, well, Thanksgiving, we've passed Thanksgiving now, but Thanksgiving through December 4th, which hopefully this will be released before December 4th, I am running, um, a promotion on them just to kick off the holiday season. And so both patterns are 25% off individually. No code is necessary, but if you do want to knit both of them, or at least have both patterns at your disposal, um, you will get actually a special discount on them if you purchase through Ravelry. So I don't believe I am able to do the same kind of discount on um, Lovecrafts and Payhip, the other two places where these are listed. Um, they just don't have the same kind of promotional um sale structure that you can set up but on Ravelry you can th get that if you can't access Ravelry for whatever reason um and you would still like to buy the two patterns together um please just shoot me um an email heritageartsco at gmail.com or a dm on instagram and I will give you a separate code so that you can purchase both of them for the bundle deal which is um 30 percent off so, but each individually right now will be 25% off. Um, and then the other thing that I just wanted to note is that Lolo did it, who um, did the colorway for the contrast that I did on these original samples, which is Cornucopia, it's called. Um, this is a beautiful colorway that really inspired the socks. Um, it just reminded me of like candy. So even though it's called Cornucopia, um, it reminded me of the candies that you would put on a gingerbread house. And so that's really what inspired it. So, um, Lolo Did It Yarns has created kits for both the fingering and the DK weight, um, that are both in these kind of colorways. So this, um, body of the sock here was just a commercially dyed yarn, um, on my sample here. But uh, the colorway that Lolo Did It has in their kits is just this incredible, it's a very similar color, but it's much more tonal and um, it's really beautiful. And then the classic cornucopia for the uh, contrast, and then just a bare um, mini for the icing detail. So that is my shameless plug for the Ice Gingerbread Socks. I will have links below to everything. You can also visit the um, link in my Instagram bio and that will have um, the links to everywhere that you need. Like I said, it's available at Ravelry, uh, Payhip, and Lovecrafts. Um, and you can get the kits at lolodidit.com. So yes, that is my shameless plug for my festive um, holiday sock patterns, the iced gingerbread socks available in fingering and DK weight. Um, as I'm recording right now, I probably should have said this all at the beginning, but it is November 30th. So we are headed right into December. 
we are already in the Advent season and um, I think everyone is starting to feel the buzz of Christmas busyness and Christmas um, Christmas festivities. I don't know. Um, our schedule is starting to fill up, so I imagine all of yours are too. But I hope that you are able to capture some bits of rest during um, this holiday season and um, that you are able to just enjoy it the best that you can and lead into the new year refreshed. Thank you so much for joining me. If you are new here, thank you especially for sticking it out for a whole episode. <laughs> um, if you're not new, thank you also for sticking it out for a whole episode. Um, if you enjoyed this episode, please give me a thumbs up below and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you um, want to know exactly when the next podcast episode comes out, well, I cannot tell you when that will be because I am not on a regular posting schedule, but you will know when the next episode comes out if you also turn the bell on below and um, turn on notifications so you will know exactly when I do post. I hope you have a great week ahead, a great season ahead, and that you get lots of knitting in and get a warm cup of something. Have a great week.